Um, welcome to the 19th of August, already. Um, fairly galloping through the year, aren't we? Um, last week I did um, you for underwear. <laughs> um, I could not think of something for V. Um, there are things, but I don't don't think that you'd be particularly interested in them. So I've skipped over V and we're on W again for weights. Now, I know I've spoken about weights <clears throat> under the equipment bit, but uh, for those of you that are new, um, you may like, I'll, I'll talk about the rule of thumb, but I want to talk about something else to do with weights as well. Uh, if you're choosing a band in weights, I'm, in I'm, I'm including bands as well. Um, if you... Um, want to test out a weight, uh, a good rule of thumb is if you can do 15 repetitions of an exercise easily, it's too light. If you can't do eight, it's too heavy. Um, the thing about a band is you can adjust the tension so one band can cover quite a few different exercises. But with weights, for example, you've got, I've got two here. There's, uh, what's this? One kilo and one and a half kilos. I think this is, yes, one and a half kilos. Now, the heavier weight, if you're ever doing, if we ever do lateral raises, a heavier weight, that's quite a difficult one to do with a heavier weight, whereas a bicep curl is easier. So depending on which exercise you're doing, you may need heavier weights. I mean, this one with the bicep curl feels just ridiculously easy. So you may need more than one set of weights, which is cumbersome and expensive. So I use a band because... You can adjust the tension on a band. So if you've got the band, you can adjust the tension. But but do an exercise with the band. Don't just do don't just do this. Oh yeah, that seems okay. Do an actual exercise. Do a bicep curl. I mean, some bands are so stiff you can't do anything with them. But just have a try at different different tensions. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about weights, sort of, is because I read. Um, somebody had written something about my classes the other day on, um, I can't remember where it was now, but they said that these are gentle exercises. And I thought, hmm, I'm not sure I quite like that description. Description, Gentle gives the idea of, well, to me anyway, it makes me think of sort of exercises that don't challenge you, that aren't particularly useful. Um, maybe a few calisthenics or something like uh, I don't know why it makes me think of Joyce Grenfell in one of the St. Trinian's films. But anyway, um, and I, I just thought, no, that's not what my classes are about. My classes are about challenging yourself. And all the exercises can be done <clears throat> more gently or more challengingly, fiercely. Uh, and so today when I'm doing the, the classes, I'm going to go through, I'm going to talk about progression and regression. So, for example, I mean, with the squat. Um, we do a full squat, we do a sort of part squat, we use the chair. So, uh, and, and if you can't stand up without using your hands, the chair does not feel particularly gentle. It feels quite challenging. Um, so today I'm going to show you, I, I want you to, to try and do the exercises to the, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Not to the best of your ability, but make it as challenging for yourself as you can without damaging yourself and without falling over. Um, and so um, using, if you've got a very light band and no matter how much tension you put on it, you can't, it, it's not a struggle. When we're doing these exercises, the repetitions, you should be glad when 10 are up. If you can do 10 easily, then you're not really challenging yourself. And I'll show you how to, how to make it. But you should get to the end of 10 and think, oh, I'm glad that's finished. Um, if you're not... No matter what you do, let me know and I'll um, send you, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get in touch with you and, and uh, give you something to, to make it more challenging. Um, but yes, so my classes are not gentle, but they're within everybody's capability. That's what I think they should have. I, I suppose they thought they were being encouraging to people. I wouldn't join an exercise class if I felt it was gentle, if, if somebody said it was gentle. Equally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Um, join a class if, if they said it was really, really hard. Um, but this is should be challenging for everybody, no matter. Even if you're really fit, 
it should be challenging for you. So do it to the to the most challenging you can. Stretch yourself, as it were. Right, nine o'clock. Doreen. <laughs> okay, thanks, Doreen. Um, so, right. For those of you, welcome to the class now. I've, I've done my, somebody said I enjoy your preamble, my ramblings. Um, if anybody can think of X and exercise is a cheat, we're not going to have exercise. X or Z for topics for the next two weeks. I'm open to suggestions. Um, right, yes. So if anybody's new to the exercise class, what you need is a chair, a fairly sturdy chair without arms, and an exercise band if you have one. If you don't, oh, weights. I mean, if you've got weights, fine. I use a band because they're cheaper, they're easy to transport, they don't take up much room. Um, if you haven't got a band, don't worry. You can still do the exercises by doing the movements. Some of our exercises don't need bands anyway. Uh, and the class is in three bits. There's the warm-up, there's the main bit, and then there's the um, stretching at the end. So after we finish, don't go zooming off to make a cup of tea. We're going to do some stretching. So I'm just going to adjust the camera slightly. We're going to start with the warm-up. So, no, I'm going to adjust it back up a bit. We're going to start by just marching on the spot, just very gently, because we're just warming up now, just marching on the spot. I'll move this out of the way. It's a bit distracting for me. So we're just marching on the spot. If you can, do it on your toes. If not, that's absolutely fine. And we're only just raising our knees slightly, just a tiny little bit, because we're only just starting. Do a slightly exaggerated movement with your arms so that your shoulders are getting mobilized. Because as you all know, as you move your joints, the synovial fluid inside gets warmed up and it lubricates it like, like the oil in a car lubric lub lub lubricates? lubricates the engine. So we're just going to do this for a few more seconds. We'll do three, two, one. And then put your hands on your shoulders. I'm going to stretch your arms right up to the ceiling. If you can get your hands by your ears, jolly good. If you can only get them there, that's fine. That's what I mean by, I mean, the, the warm-up shouldn't be challenging. But if you can only get them there, that's fine. Don't try and force them up. Put them there. If you, if you want to, you could keep moving your legs. Only if you want to, though. Hands on shoulders again. Push out to the side. Back in again. Ooh, it's going jumpy. Forward. And then up again. Out. And forward. And one more time. Up. Out. Forward. Right. Concentrating on the arms and the shoulders still. Put your hand on your shoulder and have it like an, a wing. Make sure your arm is sticking out at sort of 100 deg 180 degrees to the body. Uh, and imagine you've got a pencil sticking out from your elbow. And we're going to do a big imaginary circle on the wall. Oh, on the imaginary wall. So backwards, we're going to go one, two, nice range of movement, three, four, five. Nice and gentle, don't force anything. And then one, two, three, four, five. And then the other one. Again, make sure it's sticking out. Just have a look to make sure it's in the right place. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then forward. One, two, three, four. Five. Still sticking with the arms. We're going to do the one where as one arm comes up, the other one goes back. If you can't get your hand again, if you can't get your arm by your ear, just go as far as you can. Similarly with it going back. You don't rock. Your body stays absolutely still. We're going to do 10. I do like this exercise because it's good for your shoulders and it's good for your back as well. It's good for your posture. So standing nice and straight, shoulders relaxed. And we're going to go one, nice and slow, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Spitting. Right. We've got a little routine that we do. Those of you that are um, conversant with the class will know this. We're going to start just by doing heel digs. And then keep doing the heel digs. And as you do the heel dig, anchor your elbows into your waist. I, I do it just above my hip bones. And as you do... The heel dig, you're going to do a bicep curl with the corresponding arm, well, with the opposite arm. So left arm, right leg, etc. Just check that you're doing opposite arm and leg and check that your toe is pulled back when you're doing the heel dig. Nice and gentle, not too far in front of you. Three, two, one. Next one, we're going to just go, I'll move away from the chair slightly, out to the side. Just a small step out to the side and then have prayer hands. And as your arm goes out, sorry, as your leg goes out, your arm goes out. I do know the difference between arms and legs. It's just sometimes when I don't concentrate, <clears throat> the wrong word comes out my mouth. Imagine you're pushing the air away. Three, two, one. Next one, we're going to take a step back, just a small step. And then as you do the steps back, have your hands at chest height and your arms come forward. Spread your fingers, do a bit of jazz hands, give your hands a bit of a workout. Pushing your hands forward. Try not to hunch your shoulders as you do it. Three, two, one. And then finally, we're just going to do a toe tap like that. Just tapping your toe in front of you. Not a big step, not sort of like that. Just a little one. And at the same time, we're just going to swing the opposite arm. Just like Fred Astaire would do. I always say Fred Astaire, not Ginger Rogers, because when I was a teenager, young teenager, 13, 12, 13, 14, I was obsessed by Fred Astaire films. I was a strange teenager. All my mates were into the Beatles and the Stones. There was me doing Top Hat. Three, two, one. Fabulous. Right. We're going to do that all the way through. Sorry, all four of them together. Nice and slowly. So we're going to do heel dig. Uh, side. Back. Toe tap. Heel dig. Side. Back. Toe tap. Heel dig. Uh, side, losing my concentration here, back, toe tap, that was wrong Rosemary, last time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap, right, we're going to do a little bit of agility, feet agility, it'll warm up your ankles and your calves and it keeps you a little bit agile. Be very careful, though. Don't fall over. We're going to do a little bit of shadow walking. Remember the shadows? Of course you do. The reason I'm tilting the camera down is because I'm going to turn my back on you and do the, so as you can see my feet, people find it easier to do it if I'm um, standing in the same direction as you. So um, we're going to go. Yeah, that's right. 
So imagine there's a square in front of you. So we're going to put the right foot into the top left hand corner of the square and then take the other foot over and then back. So we're going to go right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back, right, left, back, back. Now be careful you don't trip over your feet. Now we're going to do it the other way. We're going to do left, right, back, back, left, right, back, back, left, right, back, back, right, back, back, left, right. One more time, left, right, back, back. There we are. I'm not actually convinced that the shadows ever did that. Um, because I've looked at loads and loads of video footage and I can't actually ever find them doing that. They went backwards and forwards like this, but I'm never sure they actually did that. Maybe I've invented a new dance for them, but it's good because it's, it's, it's good for balance that, it's good for concentration. Right, I think we're warmed up now. I am anyway. Uh, we're going to go on to the main body of the exercise. Now we're going to start as always, with the dreaded squat. Um, if you know how to do it, you can start doing it. Uh, if you want to do something, you don't want to start doing squats because you don't want to do so millions of them while I'm rabbiting on. Put your hands here, keeping them back like that, and then just walk on the spot. But anyway, a squat basically is sitting down without the chair. So legs, hip width apart, even maybe slightly wider, <clears throat> and you, you stick your bottom out. That's how you sit down. Some people think this is a squat, but that's a squat. Try and sit down without sticking your bottom out. Um, imagine you've got an eye in the front of your chest, not an, a letter eye, a see, an all-seeing eye, so that when you go down, your eye is there. You're not doing this. And also keep your legs, your knees wide. Don't let your knees come in like that. So you stick your bottom out. Your weight is on your heels. And you, go, you can go down that far, that far. However far you go down and keep good technique. Technique is vital because if you start to lose it and you're putting your weight on your knees and your knees are going over your toes, you've lost it and you might damage yourself. In order to make it more difficult, if you can do 10 quite easily, either go down further or do it very slowly. Count one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, ten, really slowly. If you can't do a free squat, that was progression, that bit, by the way. If you can't do a free squat, sit in the chair, hands here so as you're not tempted to use them, and stand up and then sit down. Notice how when I'm sitting naturally, my bottom sticks out. If you can't do it that, swing your arms to get momentum, and stand up, and if that's too difficult, put your hands on your knees and push yourself up. Okay, that's the sort of final, that's the easiest one. This is the next easiest. This is the next easiest, and the, <clears throat> the freestanding squat is the most difficult. Um, I thought of something then, but I can't remember what it is. It whizzed into my head and whizzed out again. It'll come to me. Right, so we're going to do 10 squats. So I always keep my hands in front of me just to counterbalance me because my weight's on my heels. One. At the top, just touch your hands behind your back. And then we'll keep those knees wide. Two. Three. Make it as difficult as you can, as challenging as you can. Four. Five, six, seven. If even this becomes too easy, eight, nine, ten. You can do it holding weights or you can get a band. 
And as you go down, hold it there. I have quite a bit of tension on it. As you go down, you use the band. It's not as good with the band, actually. Weights are better. Right. Oh, I'm getting rid of my band. We need the band. Next one is the seated row. So get your chair. And I'm sitting sideways so as you can see where my feet are and things. Feet out in front of you. Legs straight. You need to sit right on the edge of your chair. Legs out in front of you. Knees straight. Toes pulled back. And you're going to loop your band into <clears throat> over your feet. Try and get it in the instep. Um, that sort of makes it less likely the band will ping off. Uh, with this one, if, uh, if it's too easy, either get a stronger band or create more tension in the band if you, if you don't need to do that. If you're creating as much tension as you can and you're afraid that if you do any more, the band will snap, get a stronger band. You can use quite a strong band on this one because you're using both arms to pull. So feet straight on the – legs are straight. Heels are on the floor. Heels never come off the floor. Toes are, toes are pulled back, and you're going to pull back like this. Don't have your elbows out here. It's not lifting. It's just pulling back as hard as you can and try and squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's one. Only if only your arms move. Two, don't rock backwards and forwards. It's not, it's not like real rowing. Three, well, it is really. You should only use your arms. Four, five. See, this band is a bit light for me. I'm not getting much benefit for this. Six, I could do with a heavier band. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Having said that, I could feel that towards the end at ten. I could start to feel it here. All right, the next one we're going to do. Remember I was saying about when you're doing <coughs> a squat, don't let your knees come in. Well, these muscles here uh, in your glutes, your glute minimus and your glute medius, you've got three glutes, the maximus, Medius and minimus. So big, medium, small. Big, so daddy bear, mummy bear, and baby bear. So the two weakest ones and these muscles down here are weak, so your knees go in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the band. If you don't have a band, um, yeah, you could, you could hold your knees and push against your knees, but it, it is better with a band. Uh, right, so the band goes under your knees, bits, flip the bits over and hold them here beside, beside your knees. Now they don't move, your hands stay the same, holding onto the band firmly. And then you're going to open your knees until your thighs are parallel. Can you see that? And then we're going to open. Keep your feet on the floor. Let me just... Push this down a little bit. Oh, that's better. So, you're like that, and then you're like that. So you're, you're having to, to consciously push against the band to keep your thighs parallel. So we're going to go nice and controlled, two, uh, sorry, one. Two, again. You can use a um, three, <clears throat> a heavier band if you want. If you use four, I find if, a use, if you tighten the band too much, it cuts into your knees. So it's sometimes better to use a heavier band. Five. You should be feeling it on the side of your thighs now. Six. Seven. Don't let it boing in. Control that bit. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done. Right. Next, we're going to do uh, a bicep curl. 
these muscles at the front here are your biceps. So you want to put the band on the floor. The dog's asleep, by the way. Now have a bit of quite a bit of tension on the band. Again, this is one where you can have quite a bit of tension because these muscles are quite strong. Um, and have it, have your arm there. Don't have your arm right down like that. Have it slightly like that so your muscle is constantly under tension. You anchor your elbow just above your hip bone like you did, like we did when we were doing the dance. And we're going to go just closing your, just closing your your um, elbow, your arm like that. It's not this. It's only your forearm that moves. And we're going to do 10. So one, only down to there, two. If you've got arthritis in your hands, three, you might find it easier to do this with weights, four, because you can balance the weight in your hand, five, or use a band with handles, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then switch over. Have both feet on the band because that way it's less likely to ping up. Okay, you ready? One, two, don't rock. Shoulders nice and relaxed. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done. Right, now we're going to do, we're going to try and improve balance. So you need the chair so that you can hold on to something if you need to. Do not really try and use not use the chair if it's going to cause you to fall over it's really important that you don't fall over um i'm just going to have a quick um right i don't know if you saw last wednesday michael mosley um how to lose a uh, lose a stone in uh, 21 days or something i've been watching it but he was talking about life expectancy and he was saying that however long you can stand on one leg with your eyes closed is a good indicator of life expectancy. No idea how he came to that conclusion. And I can't remember what he said, what was good. Um, but I know that uh, I, I, I thought, oh, I must try that. I think uh, six or seven seconds is supposed to be quite good if you're in your 60s. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and and check it and see what he said. But I'm sure if you Google it, you can find it. Um, because I know that I'm, I'm, I don't know. How, yeah, I'm going to try it after this. You can, you can try it and let me know how it goes. I'll see if I can find anything about it. But it seems a bit peculiar just by being able to stand on one leg with your eyes shut. It tells you how long you're going to live. Anyway, this is standing on one leg with your eyes open. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in a minute, don't do this now, uh, we're going to engage our core, which are the big muscles round your middle and deep inside you as well that hold onto your backbone and allow you to stay straight and also to move. We're going to uh, engage that. We're going to put your hands on your hips if you can. If not, hold on and then sort of just... And we're going to bring one leg parallel to the floor, thigh parallel to the floor. If you can, you can just do it as high as you can. And then... We're going to slightly lift it using these muscles here. But if you're hardcore, you can lift it and then straighten it. Woo -hoo -hoo. Not using your thigh. No, you don't put your thigh up. You just straighten your lower leg. Right. And if you want to progress, obviously, you can do it with your eyes shut. Um, so if we exhale, pull your navel into your backbone as hard as you can. And then relax it slightly. Pull up your pelvic floor. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to do a talk about pelvic floor actually. Maybe in the next one. Maybe I'll I'll do Z for pelvic floor, something or X for pelvic floor, something like that. But because uh, it's really important. Um, so um, 
Too much chatter. Exhale. Pull your navel into your backbone. Relax slightly. Hands on hips. And lift. And then lift again. Or straighten if you want. And then down. Just touch it down. Don't take your weight on it. If you can. And then up. And then down, that's two. Oh, I'm falling over. Ooh, three. Up. Four. I mean, this is quite tough on your static leg as well. Five. Oops. Right, for the next five, I'm going to straighten my leg instead of raising my thigh again. Mm. Six. That is challenging. That's not gentle at all. Seven. Eight. Nine. You don't have to straighten. You can just lift again. Ten. Gentle. Ha! How very dare she. I think she thought she was being nice. Right. Oh, give your legs a bit of a wiggle. Exhale. Pull your navel into your backbone, relax it slightly, and up, up, one, two, three, Four, five, oops, six, I forgot, seven, it's tempting when you do this to lean back, but don't, if you're straightening your leg. Eight. Nine. Ah. Ten. Oh. Ooh. I don't find that one gentle at all. Right. Next one is the upward row. Now, if you don't have a band, this is a good one, actually, that if you're new to this, it might be better not to use a band because this one depends on technique quite a lot. So if you don't have a band or you don't want to use the band, hold your thumb with your other hand. That's just to stop your hands splitting apart. Uh, so you've got a nice V there. And then you're going to raise your arms, but you, you, it's your elbows that pull your, ha your, uh, your hands up. OK, the object of the exercise is not to get your hands to your chin by any means. It's to keep your elbows high. So if you can only get to there, that's fine. Keep your shoulders relaxed as well. If you can get up to there, fine. I've seen people sort of struggling like that. That's, that's no good at all. If you can only get to there, but you've still got that V, fabulous. If you want to use the band, you stand on the band, feet hit width apart. And then you cross the band over and come forward so as you can see what my hands are doing. And when you're doing this, it's quite a hard exercise, this one. It's not gentle. Keep your, uh, your forearm, your wrist and your hand in one line. Imagine it's a plank of wood. Don't bend your arms like the, your, your wrist like that. Don't lean backwards. It's only your arms that move. Keep your hands together. So we're going to go. 
One, control the descent. Two, only your arms move. Three, four, five, six, nice and smooth, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not gentle. Right, we're going to do something for the abdominals now. I don't really want to do any floor exercises, so it is quite difficult doing abdominals on chairs and things. Uh, but I think I've come up with something that works. So I want you to sit sideways on the chair so that the back of the chair is either on your left hand or your right hand side. OK, and I want you to sit fairly far forward, as it were. Have a bit of chair behind you there. And then we're going to, you're going to lean back slightly just until, not right back, but just until you, uh, your stomach muscles catch. You can hold on here if you want. If you want to feel safe, you can hold on. And you can balance yourself on here if you want with your hand. Better if your hand's here. But this one is allowed to hold on if you want. And then sitting like that, you're just going to raise knees alternately. Nice and slowly, but still staying backwards. Okay? So, we're going to do... You can sit up now. If you've been copying me, sit up. Uh, we're going to do uh, 10 on each side, but we're going to do it a few times. So, sitting back, we're going to go... That's one. Keep that tension on your stomach muscles. Two. They don't need to come up very high, just off the floor. Three, four, five, six. You could do that. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. If it's hurting your back, Lean forward a little bit. You don't need to lean right back. Just a tiny bit. And we're going to do another 10 now. So if you can, put your hands on your knees. To make sure that you don't lean back too far, what you can do is you can put your hands so that your fingertips are just by, just above your kneecap. And then we're going to go one, two, nice and gentle. Three, so it's not feeling gentle on my abs, I can tell you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I can really feel that. Yeah, so it's quite good. Arm straight, middle finger just above your kneecap, so about there. And that, that, that ensures that you're not going back too far and hurting your back. It can hurt the small of your back. I can feel that. My abs are quite strong, but I can still feel that. I'm just going to put that up a bit. We're now going to do the triceps, which are these muscles on the back here. So this is the one where you put the, the band over one shoulder and the other one holds it behind. Now this controls the tension. This one goes behind like that. As if you're going to hit something with a hammer or hit something really hard. And the object of the exercise is we're going to just keep tension on this bit and point this one to the ceiling. It's only your, uh, really only your forearm that moves, not your shoulders, not this, to the ceiling. 
if you can't, if you've got shoulder mobility impairment, bring your hand to here. And as we point to the ceiling, you point to the floor. Again, progression on this one is either increasing the tension or getting a heavier band. This is one of the ones where you don't need a very heavy band because it's quite a difficult exercise. Technique is te technically, to get the technique right, it's quite difficult, but it's also quite a hard exercise because your triceps aren't as strong as your biceps. Anyway, we'll go. One, I'm going to show you the back. Two, three, four, I can feel that already. Five, I think I must have a tension too strong. Six, seven, ah, ha, ha, ha. eight, nine, ten. I've been having tension on the bands quite, quite fierce today, as if that person could see that I wasn't being gentle, but obviously she won't be looking. Other one, ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, see I'm glad that this is the last one, ten, ooh, that was quite hard. Right, without further ado, we're going to do another 10 squats or a 10 stand-ups from the chair if you need that, whichever is up to you. The good thing about this class is you can't see anybody else, so nobody can, you can't compare yourself to anyone else, you're just doing it totally for you. It's your exercise class. So, one, two, get your um, torso as upright as possible. Mine's not that upright. Three, remember sideways. Four. Five. Six. Seven. See, my feet are quite wide. Eight, probably slightly wider than hip width. We won't fall backwards. Nine. Falling backwards is good. It means that the weight is on your heels. Ten. Ah, now, my favourite bit, the side bend. Favourite bit, not. Right, so, feet. Let me move the chair out of sight. Feet, slightly wider than hip width apart. Now, remember, when you go down, if you're going to use your arm... Keep it straight so that you're actually physically using it. You're aware of it. And it's easier if you breathe out on the down bit. Oh, so, we ready? One. Oh. Two. Try not to lean forward or back. It's to the side. Three. This is good for your core as well. Four. I do this, I do this every week with you because I hate it. Five, and I find it quite difficult, which means I should do it more. <sighs> That's not some sort of masochistic uh, leaning on my part. Uh, seven just means if an exercise is difficult, you should do it more because it means those muscles need working eight nine ten i just thought with w i could talk about walking again i might do walking next week i might stick on w again one aha ha. i felt lots of things click then two Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. That wasn't quite as painful this week. <clears throat> Dare I think I'm getting better at it. Right. We're going to, the sort of penultimate thing that we're going to do is we're going to do that little routine that we have. We're going to do it all the way through slowly for the three times, and then we're going to speed it up as if we were listening to music. So we're going to go heel dig, Side, back. If you can't, I won't, when we do it faster, if you can't find yourself <coughs> floundering around like a kipper, I don't know if kippers flounder, seeing as they're not a fish, proper fish, uh, just keep at it because you will, it will come to you. You will start to be able to do it. It's great for your, not only physically, it's great for your balance, and your coordination and your brain because you're learning something new. Okay? Do it one more time without me nattering. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Right, I know some of you play music, so if you've got music, go and put it on now. You may already have it on. I'm going to do the music in my head because of copyright reasons. So we're going to give it a good old go. Okay? So, Heel dig, side, foot, back, toe tap. Who we're dancing. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Ooh. Heel dig. Side, back, toe tap, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. One more time, heel dig, side, back, toe tap. Oh, that gets you a bit warm, doesn't it? Right, we're going to finish with something that I call heartbeat, um, and it's high intensity exercise. I'm sure you've heard of high intensity. It's all over the, anytime you watch programs about fitness, they always talk about high intensity. This is totally voluntary. So what we're going to do is three 20 second bouts of very fast running on the spot. When you're running on the spot, just take tiny steps. Don't, don't sort of do this. Just tiny little steps. Use your arms as well, but don't hunch your shoulders. I see people hunching. Just keep nice and relaxed and just go as fast as you can. And we're going to do that for 20 seconds. If you've got any problems, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I can't see whether you do it or not anyway. Um, if you get any chest pain or anything, obviously stop immediately. You can actually do it in the chair. So you could maybe do one standing up and two in the chair and leave the third one out. It's entirely up to you. In the chair, you just do this. It's actually, I think, more difficult in the chair because it's an unnatural movement. You're having to lift your legs up and down, but it's entirely up to you. So I am going, this is just to get your heart rate really going. So I am going to time you and set you going in things. So on your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. How was that? The first one, I think, is always the worst because you're just you're starting to get used to it. Uh, I think probably the first and the third are the worst. The, the middle one might be slightly better. I don't know. I'll just natter for a few minutes and a few seconds and let you 
let you um, catch your breath. Um, yes, I think I will talk about walking next week. There seems to be the, the alphabet and the, the A to Z of exercise in the alphabet is a bit like buses. You get some with none, and then you get three letters that, or a letter, a letter that has sort of three or four subjects at once. I don't know if that was a very good analogy, but you know what I mean. Right. Next one, are you ready? Gird your loins. Get those loins girded. On your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. One thing I was thinking today, I thought, well, maybe I should change some of the exercises because maybe people are getting bored with them. But then, having done it today, I think it's, I, I quite like it because it concentrates on the legs and the upper arms alternately. And some of them are, I, I find it, I don't find it gentle. Just to say that. So I think I'll leave it as it is for a while. If you're bored, let me know and I'll maybe zhuzh it up a bit, but or maybe wear a fancy dress, do it in a clown's costume. Oh no, clowns, some people are scared of clowns, aren't they? Right. I'd make quite a good DJ, wouldn't I? Because I can just talk about nothing for quite a long time. Last one, are you ready? Give this, make this one a good one. Give, you, give it some welly. So... On your marks, set, go. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Great. How did you find that? Was that okay? Not that I, uh, not that I get an answer from you, of course, but it is good for you. Just while you're catching your breath, if you have enjoyed the class, but don't go yet because we've got the stretching to do. If you have enjoyed the class um, and want to buy me a coffee, it would be much appreciated. Um, the, um, the there's a link on the comments below this. If you go onto my page. And you see the, um, you know, it, the video bit comes up, little the, the screen. If you scroll down, there are comments underneath. Uh, and there's um, uh, a link there to the Buy Me A Coffee page. Um, if you can, if you've liked it, click that button. And if you can uh, subscribe, then subscribe. It doesn't cost any money to subscribe. Subscribe is just a way of sort of liking it and click the notifications one. Um, and if anybody can think of any way, I know it's August, so people are on holiday, but if, think of a way of growing this, because I, I do think it's, I really think it's beneficial for people. And I really do think that a lot of people who don't take any exercise at all, but know that they should, people our age, would benefit from it. So if you can, if there's any marketing people out there, publicist people out there um, that um, would have any suggestions as to how we can grow this a little bit. Um, then I'd be very open to suggestions and welcome any suggestions. Okay. Good, Mavis. Yes, Mavis doesn't find it gentle. It isn't gentle. Ha! Do you think she got to me with that gentle? Maybe I should write in and say. Right, anyway, enough of that. Uh, if you've recovered, we'll uh, get into the stretching. So, if you need your chair... As usual, we're going to start at the bottom and work all the way up to the top. So we start with the calves. So the front leg is bent, the back leg is straight. Uh, make sure your heels are both on the ground. Lean forward. If you can't get your heel on the ground, move this leg in a bit. If it's right out there, the stretch is too much. Just move it in a bit. Just lean forward. And the stretch should be at the top of your calf, sort of behind your knee. And then very gently bend your back knee, put your weight on that foot and you'll feel the stretch moving down 
into your Achilles tendon, your lower calf and your Achilles tendon. And then we're going to change, change legs. I don't want to change my legs. I like these legs. Just check that your feet are both pointing in the right, in the same direction, both pointing forwards. Just feel that stretch at the top of your calf. And then very gently bend your back knee. Put your weight more on that leg. Your heel will come off the ground unless you're very peculiar shape. And you should feel this stretch moving down into your Achilles tendon. Okay. Uh, the next one we're going to do, what's the next one? Oh, yes. The quadricep, these quadriceps, your thigh muscles. So if you can, this is a, not a balancing one, so you can hold on. But if you can do it without holding on, just have a wee practice of your balance, that's fine. But grab your foot. Your, some people grab their shoe, uh, their trouser leg if it's long, anything, and bend your knee up the back. It looks like that. And have your knees together. If you can't do that, we'll do dynamic stretching, which is this. That's all you need to do. If you're doing the static stretching, I'm going to do the static stretching at the moment. I'm going to try and balance. Look, Mum, no hands. Just hold that for a few more seconds. Dynamic stretchers, keep moving your legs. Okay, and then dynamic stretchers, you keep doing this. Static stretchers, grab your other leg. Arr, gym lad. Look, I'm doing it without falling over. Okay, next one is the hamstrings, the big muscles at the back of your legs. So sitting on the chair, sit right at the edge of the chair, knees at 90 degrees, ankles under your knees, one foot forward, toe pulled back, sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. Now, some of you won't be able to get down very far. Others of you will be able to get down far. It's your stretch should be challenging, but not painful. If it's painful, slacken it off a bit. If it's not challenging, go forward a bit. You can make it more challenging by pulling your toe back a bit. But remember, just go gently. Don't bounce. You should never bounce on a stretch. It's just like this, holding it. And then sit up and I'll repeat the process on the other leg. So sitting up nice and straight, lean forward from the hips, not from the waist. And then sit up, standing up, hands out, palms facing forwards at shoulder height, and it's round the tree. So your arms are like that, not like that. So round the tree, turn it, separate here, and dip your head. And then, if you can, interlink your fingers. If you can't, just try and get your elbows together. If you're interlinking your fingers, just lift your, ar your arms up slightly, just to get that stretch across your chest. And then, one hand up like this. Palm back, have it down your back like that, if you can. If you've got shoulder mobility problems, just leave this one out. 
And then you're just going to push your arm. I'll put my hand over here so as you can see. Just pull your arm or push your arm, your upper arm backwards a bit so that you get a stretch here. This one again is technique. Some people find this one difficult to feel any benefit from the stretch. But if you keep at it, you will. And then release that one. And do the other arm. That's it. What does that say? And release, and we've now reached the neck. So, sitting in the chair, just nice and comfortably, but don't use the back to um, support yourself. Use your own muscles to support yourself. Dip your head. Put your hand on your crown, but don't push. Just let the weight of your hand push your head down a little bit. Just to stretch up your back. And then look up and then put your head to the left and note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder. Take your right hand, put it on the right hand side of your chin. Try and turn your head back to the centre, but resist with your hands so that you're having a fight. You're creating tension in your neck. And then relax and keep your head turned. You should be able to turn your head slightly more to the left. Keep it turned there. And then bring it back to the centre. And then turn it to the right. Note where your chin is in relation to your shoulder. And left hand on the left hand side of your face. Try and turn your head to the centre, resist with your hand, really resist, get that tension going and then relax and you should be able to turn it a little bit further. And that's it, I just noticed it's been going about an hour, it's me blabbing on isn't it? Right, thank you very much and um, we'll see you next Wednesday. If you've got any questions, any suggestions, anything like that, please get in touch. Um, my Facebook page is a good way to get in touch with me. I'll put the link on after this. Uh, or you can just do it on the comments section because I get notification of comments. Um, I think that's Facebook is definitely the easiest way to get in touch with me. Well, it is for me. It might not be for you if you don't have a Facebook account. Anyway, I'll stop blethering on now. I'll stop havering. And I'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>